Hi, this is Abbott, Time for Clocks, and today I'm going to restore an antique clockmaker's uh, staking set. Staking sets usually come in this uh, a box similar to this, and uh, it has nice uh, finger joints. It's well made, but it's had a lot of use. Here's here's some pictures of what the tools look like, the condition of the tools themselves. They were really rusted. The tools inside, they go in these little holes. This is but a little ultrasonic cleaner I bought on Amazon a few years ago. It was about $60, I think. And uh, it actually works pretty good. I think Harbor Freight has a similar one. <clears throat> this rust removing product is called Evapo Rust. It's kind of expensive, but it's, it's actually really good. And you can use it in ultrasonic cleaners, and it's supposed to be non toxic, safe for your hands. And the best part is that uh, I can save the liquid that I used and reuse it. I put all the metal parts in here, you can hear it buzzing, and uh, they're about ready to come out. Here's what it looks like. Okay, they're all in the pot. I'm just going to rinse it with uh, some water and I'll be right back. And now I'm just going to put them here on this uh, on this flashing. So when I use the heat gun to dry them, it won't damage anything else. I'm just drying a few parts at a time. <clears throat> I just did part of it on the on the brass wire wheel on my grinder. And it actually, it actually uh, cleaned up real nice. I did, I did this part. There's none of that residue on there at all. I could have done that, I guess, without soaking it in the rust remover. I could have gone that, the route, just done everything on the wire wheel. But these do have little tiny holes in the end, and I. Hopefully, it'll it'll stop and remove any rust that was in there. So anyhow, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire wheel all the rest of them, and then we'll be back. Alright, now I'm going to put on some uh, protective wax. Any kind of liquid wax I think would, is good to keep the rust from coming back. I use this, I'm going to use this uh, wax I got up at uh, Harbor Freight with a coupon. But you can use anything. I had this one I think it was 49 cents at a garage sale 12 years ago. I used it a few times, but now it's pretty much dried up. It won't squirt out anymore. Well, these parts are really small. So I'm just going to give them a little rub there. And each of these I'll do, I'll coat each one. Okay, that, I'm sure that's had time to haze up. Now I'll just rub each one. I'll put those small ones in here. Always save small containers, they're really useful. This one had Chinese tea. So 
now all I have to do is uh, put the anvil part back together. All right, now now it comes to the <laughs> problems related to the box. It uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. I think based on based on the end grain. I don't know if you can see that. I think it's maple. I'm going to take those off, hit them on the wire wheel, and see what they look like. And the, when you open it up, this is how it came, just like that, and all the tools were separate. But it actually goes in like this. And the lid had been re-glued. I see the marks where somebody had re-glued this at one time. And then on the tray that holds all the toolings, <clears throat> the tool bits and so forth, the punches, it's uh, broken right here. The end broke off. But you can see that it had been repaired before. It broke here. It was re-glued. It broke here. It was re-glued. And on the side, it was coming apart at one point. Somebody, I don't know what kind of glue that is, silver glue that is. So it has been broken at one time. I think somebody just dropped it and the weight of the tools broke. And uh, also, there's these holes here. And there's, a, there's supposed to be a little pin that goes in there. So that when you're using the tools, this just flips up like this. This is going to be the challenging part right here. And yeah, I'm just resanding the whole thing. Another problem, and that is. Watch. See? It's getting ready to separate across that entire. So, what I think I'm going to do is. Uh, And it's also loose here. See? Right now I'm going to see... Uh, I just want to take off the first layer of finish with the sanding. The belt was just a 120. I just want to get most of the finish off. So now I'll just do some hand sanding.
Well, it's not perfect. But I can work with it. And after you apply it, you let it sit about 10 to 15 minutes, and then uh, you just buff it off with another rag. <clears throat> All right. Let that dry about 10 minutes. I'll come back and give it a buff. And your cloth can just go right inside. Get a nice cloth and give it a buff. All right, that's all I'm going to do. Nice and smooth. Now, I just left all that, I didn't sand out all these marks on the bottom, the scuff marks because I actually think it, it gives a piece character now I'm not the kind of person that goes to the extreme when I make something I beat it with a an old chainsaw blade chainsaw chain to uh, <laughs> give it an old appearance I mean you can but this is the way it came so there it is All right, I'm gonna put the hinges on now, and I'm pretty sure these are not original. I think I mentioned that before. I mean, they'll still work. But uh, two of the sides had nail, and the other side had screw. They were mis mismatched, so I went up to Ace and bought uh, Ace Hardware. They actually have a pretty good selection of hardware. So I bought eight new brass slotted screws for 19 cents each. I didn't show it, but I, I did put I did oil the hinges. I just folded it, and then I put a a little drop, little tiny drop on each one. Moved it back and forth, and then wiped all the excess off. You don't want oil leaking out. You just want enough to help that hinge to work work smoothly.
actually I think that's pretty good. It only has to come up, you know, this far. I made this this little hinge here, but in order for it to work, it has to slide up and down. For instance, this brad, once it goes into the wood like this, this needs to slide up and down. 